is the bandwidth really the bandwidth? So on Cisco routers, you can set the bandwidth on the interface. So you could set this to 1,000 kilobits. You could set this to 10,000. You could set this to maybe one kilobit. I don't know why you do that. But um, with Cisco routers, the bandwidth command doesn't actually change the bandwidth, which seems counterintuitive. And the clock rate actually sets the bandwidth of the interface, um, the actual speed of it. But the bandwidth command is just a label, just like a name, that says, hey, this interface is this fast, right? And it's used in routing protocols. So routing protocols, if you don't know um, it by now, all they do is tell other routers what networks they have directly connected to them. So they, uh, this router knows about the 10 network and it tells, hey, you want to get to this cool network over here? Go this way, right? They just exchange routes with everybody. Everybody knows everybody. So everybody knows the cool, swaggy, Colgate network here between these two routers. Brush your teeth, brushy, brushy. Everybody knows the cool bomb bond secret agent network here, the zero network. Everybody knows the derp network. I mean, come on, everybody loves the derps. And then they exchange all the PCs, right? All these networks, the actual clients. So, um, again, the bandwidth is just a name, a label on an interface that's used in routing. So let's ping, so let's say this PC wants to ping this PC over here. So let's actually do a trace route. So a trace route, if you don't know, already know, um, finds the path to the destination network, all the routers and devices in between to get to the destination, what the actual uh, path is for the uh, communications. So let's actually go to that PC and let's do a trace route to that network. So right away we can see um, our default gateway is the first hop. The second is the next router and our destination. So if we actually look at this, our first hop is to the gateway, which makes sense. Our next hop is to the next router, dot 10, which makes sense. And then finally to our destination, so three hops. And it took the best path, right? Because this is a direct link, and this is faster than going all the way around this way. Much faster. So let's change the bandwidth right here to one kilobit here. Let's see what happens. Let's see. We're going to derp the network, man. It's going to go crazy. So let's do a bandwidth on this interface of one kilobit. So now we changed it. Let's see how we bricked our network. So let's do a trace route again, see what happened. So our gateway, our gateway is the first hop. What? What is this? 192168 and then our destination PC. So that looks really weird. So first our gateway, let me erase this. First our gateway, then we get on this weird interface over here, and then it's finally the destination, which does not make any sense. So what's happening is this router here knows how to get to this network over here, and the best path to that is through this serial link here. So the first hop is to the router, which makes sense. And then when the packet finally gets there, right? So um, this router will send a response back. There's always a response to the uh, client, right? Because we're doing trace route and the type of packet is ICMP. And there's a time to live that um, that's reduced by one decrements or whatever. So you send a TTL of one, I believe, and then the router will set it to zero. And once it reaches zero, it sends a reply back saying you reached whatever the time to live has exceeded. That prevents um, packets from going in a loop forever. So each router will um, decrease that TTL. It's just a number. So that's what we use in traceroute. So our first hop is to the gateway. 
then it actually takes this path and gets to this router here. But the thing is, this router here, when it sends a reply back, knows that the best path back is this way. Oh my gosh, this way. Because we set a bandwidth here of the label is one kilobit, and this is way better, 1544, 1544. This is a much faster route than going straight back, which is completely weird. And then we finally um, get to the destination with the trace route. So that's how it kind of works. This, this, is really, this is really messed up, this network. So let's fix it. So now that we know what's going on, let's change this interface to one kilobit two. So go to this. And you just go to the interface and set a bandwidth of one. So it's one kilobit. So neighbor came up, everybody's happy. So we'll go to the PC again and we will do a trace route. So our first hop is our gateway, which makes sense. Our next hop is an X router, dot six. The next router is dot two and our destination PC of 172. So the actual path it's taking now is our gateway. The next is dot six, which is the next router. And this router will send it off to the next router, which is dot two here in this interface. And then it finally reaches the destination. So one, two, three, four hops we have now. Because now that we set this interface to one kilobit, it knows that the best path to this remote network here is the fastest way is to go through this path all the way around this way. And once it gets there, this um, router knows that the best path to come back, right? Because this, this interface is set to one kilobit. This is way faster, 1,544. It comes back this way, back to the client. So with the hop counts, on the TTL, it's just um, an ICMP packet. So I believe it's set to one at first. So when the, it reaches the first router, it uh, re subtracts one. So when it reaches zero, it sends a reply back to the source saying, hey, um, the TTL ran out, time to live, you can't go any farther. So then it knows the first device. Then it sets a TTL of two, so once it reaches this router, it um, remove, subtracts one, so now the TTL is one, and when it sends it to the next router, the TTL um, is one, so now it's reduced again by one, so this is zero, so it sends back a reply saying, hey, your TTL ran out. So it keeps on doing this, increases the TTL little by little to see where all the devices are at, the intermediary devices to the destination. That's how trace route works to um, your destination, the path. So going back to the very beginning, the bandwidth to recap is just a name, a label on an interface, and it's used in routing protocols to find the best uh, path to the destination. So I hope this was helpful, and thank you for watching.